Hi everyone, thank you for joining. We'll get started in just another minute. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Um, hi everyone, this is Erin from TerraWorks, and I'm so excited to share what we have in store for you for our newest release. TerraWorks 4.8 can get even more data to the mobile user's fingertips and can make that data more efficient to use. Uh, before we dive in, I just wanna cover a few housekeeping rules. Everyone's on mute by default, but please feel free to send questions uh, via the chat or uh, click the button to raise your hand and I can unmute you to ask your question. Since today's presentation is brief, I'm gonna first do a demonstration of the new features and then pause for questions at the end. This session is being recorded and will be posted for sharing. So we have two major features in TerraWorks 4.8. A bulk of the work we did over the last quarter was invested in expanding sync volumes and we are also releasing a feature called Click to Call, which you'll see both of today. So firstly, we've made some changes to the way we're syncing data from Salesforce to the TerraWorks mobile app, which allows about 40 times more data to go to the device. This is gonna create a lot of flexibility for your highly mobile or supervisory staff that need to sync a much larger data set to their device than the typical mobile user. To give you an idea, a device that met our minimum requirements, technical requirements before 4.8 that had a about 300 megabytes of RAM in versions before uh, the newest release could sync about a thousand records at 20 fields each. And starting in TerraWorks 4.8, that same user should be able to sync 40,000 records. Previously, customers in these types of roles that need a large amount of data um, would face a timeout limit from Salesforce but with the restructuring of our sync protocol, any new limits that are faced are gonna be based on the performance of the device. So this means we're gonna have more control over what those limits are and that our sync volumes will continue to scale as hardware improves. The next feature is called click to call and using this feature, your mobile staff can easily pull up a client's contact information from Salesforce and click on a phone number to start a call. As you can see in the screenshot, phone numbers are going to be appear as a link, and then when you click that, it'll open the phone number in your native phone app. So this is gonna save your team time in both clicks and miss dial phone numbers trying to memorize or do copy and paste from multiple screens. So this is gonna connect your mobile users to your clients faster. So let's take a look at both of these in Salesforce and on the TerraWorks mobile app. Today we're gonna to go through a scenario where I'm a supervisor and I might work in all the different regions of my organization and therefore I need the contacts in, um, all the contacts in my Salesforce org. Um, and I want to be able to pull up a person's information um, to be able to schedule an appointment with them. So in this job called Make Appointment, we take a look at the details of this TerraWorks job. Um, and you can ignore the message on the top. It's essentially saying this job is not assigned to any mobile users right now. If we scroll down to the drill down hierarchy, it has two levels. The first level is the account object and the second is the contact object, standard objects out of Salesforce. 
once the mobile user selects an account, they'll be able to select all the contacts related to that account. And for each account, we're syncing more than 30 uh, fields per record. Then once the mobile user selects a contact, they can use information from that contact record to um, create an appointment. So the mobile user I'm going to be logging in as today is mobile at aarontest.org. And I've been assigned six different accounts. If we take a look at the mobile record assignment. I'll be synced out data from the Agricom account, Aquacom account, Biodigester City, et cetera. So there are six of them. To take a look at the volume of data that is associated with each of those accounts, I've got a report showing those six accounts and then counting the number of contacts associated with them. So there are thousands of records associated with each account. And if I scroll down to the bottom of this report, then you can see that there are almost 23,000 records in total. So this is the volume of data that we'd like to sync out to this particular mobile user. If I go ahead and look at mobile on the mobile side, right now I don't have any jobs assigned to me. So there's no data that's been synced to the device. And the reason I'm demonstrating this first is in the current state for those mobile users who are facing that Salesforce limit, um, that's usually faced on the initial sync. So the very first time the mobile user logs in, they have to pull in all the data they've ever needed. Um, or all the data in total that they need to the device. Um, and that's usually where the error comes into play. So um, we're going to simulate that same scenario, and we'll see that is not a problem for TerraWorks 4.8. So I'm going to go to the job and now assign this job to myself, which means that for the accounts that I've been assigned, I'll receive those accounts and all the contacts associated with those accounts and more than 30 fields for each of those contact records on the next sync. So I'm going to go ahead and sync. Now, if today or because of the new sync, previously you were only sending 500 records to the mobile user, but now you know it's possible. So you're going to send thousands of records to a mobile user. The sync will be a little bit longer, but the main differentiator is that the sync will complete successfully. So no more hitting the, those Salesforce limits. Now, when I start the job to make an appointment, I'm going to select to create an appointment and select an account and then choose a contact for which I want to make a phone call to to um, record an appointment for. So as you can see, there are thousands of records associated with this account. Same as the current state, I could just type a name that if I'm looking for someone in particular as well, and it'll filter down all of the matches. So once I've found the contact I'd like to schedule an appointment with, I can select that record. So you can see as well, these are all the fields associated with that um, contact. And that um, concludes the demonstration of our new outbound sync. So now I'm going to show you our other feature called Click to Call. Obviously, all the phone numbers associated with this record are highlighted here. Um, it doesn't need to be a Salesforce phone number field. It just needs to be in the, the string needs to be in the format of a phone number. And if I wanted to now call Erin so I could schedule an appointment with her, I can just click the phone number and make the phone call with two short clicks. Now let's say she didn't pick up and I want to try another number. I can use the native back button to go back to Terrorix exactly where I left off. So let's say I call another number. She tells me the time and day that she's available and now I can create the appointment. Additionally, if I wanted to navigate back to the TerraWorks app while I have my phone app open and on speakerphone, I can do that as well. So then I would just input the date um, and time and create the appointment associated with that contact. So that is click to call. Um, does anyone have any questions about the two major features we have releasing in 4.8? Not seeing any hands raised and no 
questions as of yet. Oh. Okay, great. Thanks, Lillian. Seems like everything's clear so far. Okay. So before you all run out and start upgrading to TerraWorks 4.8, I do want to talk about some of the, the implications of the upgrade. Um, so in previous versions of TerraWorks, the data that was sent to the device was solely controlled by TerraWorks mobile record assignment. So if I assigned a particular account to a mobile user and, and um, they were assigned jobs that used account records, they'd be assigned those accounts and any related records they'd need for the jobs that they were assigned, no questions asked. Um, in TerraWorks 4.8, we're now going to consider whether the mobile user has access to read that data based on Salesforce security settings. So that means in the TerraWorks partner user profile, the mobile user will need to have at least read access to all the objects and fields present in the drill-down hierarchies of the TerraWorks jobs the mobile user has been assigned. Additionally, if you have record level security implemented in your system, you're going to want to consider whether mobile user has access to all the records that they're receiving today. So if you have any objects that are marked private in your organizational wide defaults, that means that your users in Salesforce and in TerraWorks only have access to the records that they own or someone below them in the role hierarchy owns. So previous to 4.8, um, this wasn't taken into consideration. Now that we are, if you do have a security model set up that you think is going to impact your mobile users' access, or maybe you know records that they're being synced today, they're not going to be synced in 4.8, you could create a custom sharing rule, rule um, a blanket criteria-based rule, giving your mobile users access to all the records in a private object. And this will guarantee the continuity in the records the mobile users receiving in 4.7 um, and 4.8 to 4.8. Um, the other implication is that if you are still on a device with 300 uh, megabytes of RAM, which was our previous requirement, um, you're still going to be able to sync and you're actually still going to see improved sync volumes. Um, we are just increasing this requirement so that you can take the best advantage of the feature. Any questions on any of that? Um, if a lot of what I'm talking about when it comes to record level security and organizational wide defaults doesn't sound familiar to you at all, it probably means that you don't have record level security set up in your org. But if you have any questions or maybe you're confused at all, there are a couple of different resources you can you have to. On our support site, the very first step for upgrading to 4.8 is to do a security review. So we've got screenshots there. Um, going through the different um, going through the different uh, places in your org that you would look to see what your security model um, could entail and how it could impact 4.8. Um, additionally, when you're upgrading, if you don't have the appropriate settings for objects and fields, uh, maybe you didn't have read level access on the objects and fields in your TerraWorks jobs before, um, you'll get a sync here. So you know, it's always best practice to do your own test as an admin after upgrade, um, and you would see that sync here. For record level security, this is probably more important to test because it wouldn't result in a sync error. Um, you'll just want to make sure that the mobile user is going to be synced all the same records that they are today. Because if they're being limited by something you have set up in your security model, um, those records just won't go to the device. And it looks like we have a question about this. Um, can you show how you can see which users have access to which records? Sure. Um, so let me actually also open up our support site. So if anyone hasn't visited our support site before, it's towerworks.zendesk.com. We have a user guide here and um, a section on installations and upgrades. So um, the very first article in Upgrading to Terrorx 4.8 goes through each of those different levels of access for, and let me review the question again. So Lillian's asking, can, which, can you show which users have access to which records? Um, so the first, that's what this um, article will entail. That's essentially record level access. Um, and we're 
going to start by going to your organizational wide defaults. So the steps are here, but let me just show you. I don't think I have, um, there aren't any implications in my demo org, but let me just show you where that is. So in the setup menu, if you go to sharing settings under security controls, this is where um, you're going to see your object level, um, your object setting for your entire organization, both for your internal users. So from a Terex perspective, these would be people on your uh, sysadmin profile or your Terex user profile, and also external access. So these are your Terex mobile users. So for any of these objects, if they're marked as private, so you can see there's a whole series of them here, you wanna ask yourself whether or not Terex mobile users need this for their Terex jobs. If so, then you have uh, two options. Essentially, you're going to check whether or not the mobile user owns the records that they um, are being synced. So for every record in the system that's not a child of another record in a master detail relationship, um, there's an owner field. And that ownership is going to drive who can have access for private objects. So you either have to own a record or be um, above the owner of the record in your role hierarchy. From an internal perspective, it's actually a different role hierarchy than externally. For your mobile users, the external role hierarchy is three levels per account. Um, so if I go and look at my mobile user account, I can have the role user, manager, or executive for each account, partner account. So if a user owns a record, all the managers can see all the records users own. If a manager owns a record, all the executives can see the records that a manager owns. But if I'm a user, I can only see the records that I own since I'm the lowest role in hierarchy. So if I think this is probably only relevant for our customers who have implemented an external role hierarchy for use in the partner community. So we have some customers who not only do the mobile users use the Terex mobile app, but they might have um, connectivity um, every once in a while. Maybe they go into a branch office or a, have a location where there's Wi-Fi and a laptop, and they'll actually log into the partner community um, to work with the data that they've synced into Salesforce. So if that is the case, then you might have already set up um, and looked into these roles um, and your organizational wide defaults to control what a mobile user can see in the partner community. If none of that sounds familiar and you're not one of those customers, more than likely, you just want everything that the mobile user has been assigned to go to the device. So if, for example, I had the account um, object set to private um, and I upgraded to 4.8 and the mobile user doesn't own any of these accounts, then the mobile user is not gonna have um, receive any of these records anymore. If I wanted to essentially override what that um, organizational de Y default is, you could create a custom sharing role. So if I go back to my organizational Y defaults and pretend that account is public, then I can go down to the bottom here and create some sharing roles. So if you wanted to create like a blanket sharing rule saying, I want all mobile users to have access to all records in the account object um, via Salesforce security settings, and I'm just gonna control who gets what via Terraworks mobile record assignment. So essentially, I want everything to happen in 4.8 the way it's happening today. You could just create a sharing rule um, based on some criteria that's always true. So for example, account name is not equal to null or something to that effect, and then share it with all of your partner users or um, based on a portal rule. So if everybody's a Terrex partner user, just share it with everybody. And this will essentially um, make it so things are gonna operate the exact same way they are today. But I think for the most part, most of our customers actually aren't um, taking advantage of a record level security at all. So my guess is if you go through this list, all the objects that you're syncing out to the um, Terraworks mobile app are gonna be marked as public. 
So really long-winded answer. Um, Lillian, did that answer your question? And if not, we're happy to have a discussion with you as well if you want to have this go through these same things but in your org. Somewhat. Okay. Yeah, we're happy to have a discussion if you want to go ask to go through your org with you. Um, and then there are also in step by step instructions on what I just reviewed on our support site. All right, excellent question. Any other questions about the 4.8 upgrade? Okay, so then it's just some a few regular um, upgrade public service announcements. Um, do be sure you're doing the upgrade steps for every major version. If you're on TerraWorks 4.6 today, you need to go through all the 4.7 upgrade articles and then all the 4.8 upgrade articles. Secondly, don't forget to map the permissions before clicking install. If you're actually looking at our articles and following our upgrade articles, as we hope you're doing, um, the steps in bright red and, and we've called it out, but it does seem to, it is uh, easily missed based, based on the structure of the page. So um, the implications of skipping this step mean that you're going to have to go back into your security profiles and manually do the settings um, for the new features, which is not fun and can be time consuming. So just don't forget to um, follow the steps exactly. Also, don't forget to notify your mobile users in advance of the upgrade. Um, this is especially relevant if you're doing a multi-version upgrade. I know a lot of people didn't upgrade to 4.7 because it was a ter just a terminology update. So please do go through um, all the steps, but also notify your mobile users at, in advance. So. Uh, one benefit of telling your mobile users, I'm going to be doing an upgrade for a six hour period on this day, just go ahead and work offline, is that if a mobile user accidentally syncs while you're in the middle of the upgrade, so maybe you have the Salesforce org on TerraWorks 4.7, they'll be prompted to download the mobile version for 4.7. And then again, when you're done, we've completed the up multi-version upgrade um, when they sync and the back ends on 4.8. So it could save your mobile users some time and some data um, if you just give them a window with which to work offline, um, especially for multi-version upgrades. It's also just helpful in general, even if you're on 4.7 and you're upgrading to 4.8, um, because they are going to have to download a new file. So it's helpful to for them to plan to be topped up when it comes to mobile data or maybe access a, a Wi-Fi network to download that file. Um, and as I said, if you have any questions at all um, and or you're uneasy about the security implications or if you're a first or a new customer doing an upgrade for the first time, please write in to support at terrorworks.org and we're happy to walk that through with you. Um, one more question we have here. To confirm, they can record data offline while I'm upgrading. I thought they had to completely sync prior to the update. Yeah, so um, the upgrade is seamless to your mobile users. The only impact is that when the back end on, is on a new version and they sync, they're going to be prompted to download the new version. Um, so yeah, they can completely, definitely work offline while you're doing the upgrade. You're welcome. Any other questions? Just do a last check for hand raising. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody else has any questions. Um, if you do think of anything, just feel free to reach out to us. And if there's nothing else, thank you everyone for joining and have a wonderful day.